President Biden, Vice President Harris, distinguished guest, beloved Elizabeth, and thank you, Robin, for reminding me that your dad loved brevity. I grew to love my brother in Christ, Robert Joseph Dole. I am entering my 19th year in the Senate, and one of the high points, though I came after uh, the Honorable Robert Dole had left was to meet Elizabeth. Elizabeth is one of the most ethically congruent people I know. To know you is to love you. I know the many phone calls and how I have been blessed by our friendship. Your spirituality dwarfs my own, but it rubbed off on Bob. <laughs> I used to have furtive rendezvous with Bob in this very cathedral so many memorial services, he was here, sometimes pushed in a wheelchair, but I would, at the end of the service, bolt around the side of the cathedral for our rendezvous at the four. We really got to know one another well, particularly uh, when we were, uh, I was able to work with him on the World War II Memorial and learn so much from this great patriot. As I listened to the readings, I thought about him. What an appropriate reading uh, for the Old Testament, Isaiah 40, 31, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, run and not be weary, walk and not faint. I used to wonder, did, did we get that right? It seems it should be run and not faint, walk and not be weary, but the pedestrian and prosaic movements of life can often push you to the point of fainting far more than those emergency moments with the adrenaline rush. And then, what a beautiful passage for the New Testament. Love, agape, understanding, creative, redemptive, goodwill for humanity, which describes the life and legacy of Robert Dole. I'm still working on calling him Bob. I still can't do that. <laughs> I remember Elizabeth when we had the conversation and you put Bob, you said, let me put Bob on the phone. And I had the beatific experience of having a conference call with spiritual royalty. And at the end, I had a sense 
that Bob knew he was cared for by a great shepherd. So I'd like to toss in another verse. Psalm 23, verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I believe my beloved brother in Christ knew he was cared for by a great shepherd. A shepherd who said in John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Bob was a covert spiritual agent. He did not wear his religion on his sleeves. He resonated with the sentiment of Francis of Assisi, preach the gospel everywhere you go. When necessary, use words. He believed the sentiment of Edgar Guess, I'd rather see your sermon than hear it any day. I'd rather it should walk with me than merely tell the way. This covert spiritual agent believed that he was cared for by a great shepherd who left the chance of cherubims and seraphim and a rainbow encircled throne in a land where night never comes to make a breakthrough at Bethlehem to see about Bob, to see about you, to see about me. And he could say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. He knew, I firmly believe, Elizabeth, he knew that there was brevity, as Robin put it, in that valley. I'm not going to be walking around in that valley. I'm not going to be having a picnic in that valley. Yea, though I walk, remember they will walk and not faint. Yea, though I walk through, it's temporary. He knew that he was not in that valley to stay. For 2 Corinthians 5, 1 says, if this earthly tent that we live in is destroyed, praise God, we have a building not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. He knew that. He knew that there was light in the valley of shadows. You cannot have shadows without light to project the shadow and he could say with the Psalter in the 27th Psalm, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? He served a savior who said, I am the light of the world. But there was one other thing he knew. He knew he knew that there was comfort 
in that valley. And, and we've talked about this day coming. He knew there was comfort for us. That shepherd he loved so much and we loved so much once said, Matthew 11, 27 and onward, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy. <laughs> my burden is light. I remember when you told me that he died in his sleep. And I said, what a transition. And those words of William Cullen Bryant immediately leaped to my mind for he was telling us how we should aspire to transition. He wrote, so live, that when your summon comes to join that innumerable caravan, where each must take his chamber in the solemn halls of death. Go thou not like the quarry slave, scourged to his dungeon at night, but sustained and soothed by an unfaltering trust. Here it is, here's Bob. Approach thy grave as one who wraps the drapery of his couch about him and lies down to pleasant dreams. My brother in Jesus Christ, ret quiescat in pace. Rest in peace.